What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Let's Machine, back here again for Practical Machinist. Today we're gonna to be kicking off a shop tour series with a tour of my own shop, Lakewood Machine. Before we get started here, make sure you like and subscribe if you wanna see more videos. Let's get into it. So for those of you who don't know, my shop is Lakewood Machine and Tool. We're in Newmarket, Ontario, Canada. Um, the shop was started in 1988 by my old man, Peter Sandusky. Um, it started as a die shop and tooling shop, essentially a machine and tool, I guess. But it was exclusively machine tooling and manual machining, obviously until CNC came along. But because of that, we still have a lot of die equipment here. We used to build dies all year round um, you know that was the predominant function of the business now we do a little bit of die maintenance and occasionally may build a small tool but we don't do half as much as we used to as some a lot of you guys know it's cheaper for a lot of companies to go get a die made overseas and spend 50 grand fixing it once they get it back here as opposed to making it here so the way it is we've had to shift and you know businesses pivot so because of that, we still have a lot of our old die making equipment here. So we have a big auto grinder over here. Please excuse me that it's very dirty. <laughs> Hasn't been used in a long time and it needs a good scrub. But that is a automatic grinder. So you throw a, a block on there and it will go ahead and grind it to whatever you set it to. And we do have a smaller grinder here. Uh, we used to have another grinder. So we could have two guys grinding and an automatic grinder all going at the same time. But over the years, we've kind of whittled down some of the equipment that we don't need in that regard because we, we don't really build dies anymore. Um, we have one guy who does die maintenance as opposed to five guys that do die creation and maintenance. So our need for those kind of machines has decreased over the years, but that's the way it goes. On the other side of that die making equipment, we have our little metrology station and shim type station. Um, we don't really, do a whole lot of super, super tight tolerance stuff. So for what we do, height gauges, micrometers, um, inspection sheets, nice service plate. We have another smaller service plate over there. Pretty much all we need. Here we have all our gauge blocks and all that kind of good stuff. But we don't really do anything that, you know, requires measuring to microns or anything. So, you know, this generally gets us to everything we need to do. Uh, you know, if you know what you're doing, you can measure just about anything with a surface plate and a height gauge very accurately. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's good enough for what we do. If we, we used to have a CMM machine, we actually had a secondary business called Lakewood, Lakewood Machine, Lakewood Technical Services, LTS. And uh, we had bought a giant room size CMM back when they first came out and that business didn't go anywhere. So for now, this is our measurement. We'll leave the CMM to the guys who are really good at it. So going into our main unit here, we have three units. In, a, in our main unit here, we have a tryout press, or I guess a small production press, and a tryout press. The tryout press is obviously back from our tooling days. We uh, used to do some small run production type work on it. Now we predominantly use this one. I don't know what kind of press it is. I don't even know what the tonnage is on it. We use it for very light applications. I believe it's some homebrew machine that some guy made, but it works really well, it's very safe. Uh, we operate it from a distance with a foot pedal, but uh, typically we don't do a whole lot of press work either. We usually use it to press rivets and to uh, rivet a spring clip to another part. That's predominantly all we use it for these days. Let's go into the main area of the shop now. Here we have both my baby and the bane of my existence, our Sonic AQ325L wire EDM machine. Um, it is a nice machine for an old machine, but it is an old machine. And any of you guys who run wire EDM will know, the older a wire machine gets, the more finicky they are, and especially older machines just have more quirks. Kind of is the way it is. Um, this is a our second wire machine. It is a 2005, I believe. It, it does good work. Um, it's got a work envelope of about a foot. That's what the 325 stands for, is 325 millimeters uh, work area. We got it predominantly when we started to do die sections and punches and all that kind of good stuff. So, you know, cutting out punches out of blocks and cutting die sections. 
for those of you who don't know, wire DM is really good because you can cut hardened material. So you don't need to, you could cut a block, uh, mill it size, grind it, or set it up for hardening, grind it size, and then you can cut hardened parts out of it. So it's really good for die work. Um, these days we predominantly use it for cutting keyways. Uh, I do cut replacement punches for a lot of dies still. You know, we'll make a block and cut dies for, uh, cut punches for dies that we, you know, put out 10, 15 years ago that we sell in production. So it does get a lot of work. It doesn't get as much work as it used to, but it's a really, really nice capability to have since it's paid for and it's on the floor, we might as well use it. This is our little CT tooling center. So we try to keep all our holders here nice and organized. Tools that we use all the time, like face mills, we keep in the holders all the time. Besides that, we try to strip out the holders as we go, but it's nice to have a good selection depending on what the job you're gonna do is. So this is our biggest machine. This is a Haas VF5 vertical mill. Um, it's got 60 inches of travel on the X. It's a great machine. It is a workhorse. Um, love this machine. It can do a lot. We got it predominantly to do really big die shoes and die plays when we first uh, got it. It's 2005, so we were still doing enough die stuff at that point. Now it's nice to have just because, I mean, it's not like one of those big gantry mills or one of the giant mills. Some of you guys might have. But uh, it handles just about everything we can throw at it. And since we have all our machines on the angle, if there's anything bigger, we can open the door and have it hang out. And we do that all the time, especially with long parts. But uh, it's a great machine, does what we need it to do. This is our oldest machine. This is a Haas VF4. It is a 1995 or 1996. I can't remember off the top of my head. But this is pretty much our all-purpose production workhorse. Um, for being as old as it is, it still holds a tolerance to within what we needed to do. I've never had any major issues with it uh, in that regard. I have had to rebuild this mantle before, I have had to replace the gearbox a couple times. Uh, you know, the older these machines get, the more difficult it is to keep them going. But at the same time, the machine has paid for itself a million times over. Um, you know, it's it's a piece of our capacity. So I, at some point we may upgrade, but I mean, for now it still runs, it, it makes good parts. It's a great machine. This predominantly runs steel and aluminum. Uh, if we have any jobs, we're gonna really be hammering on the spindle with steel. I try to run them in here because at the end of the day, it's starting to beat up. It doesn't matter if it gets a little more beat up. Behind me here, we have a Haas, let me turn this off because the fan's on. A Haas VF3 vertical mill. It is a 1997. This machine stays set up with this kind of fixturing pretty much all the time. Uh, at least it used to, we do thousands and thousands of these parts every year. So it runs on a good week when we have the production need all the time. We just keep it running, somebody feeds it, it runs for four or five hours, somebody else comes and reloads it. Um, again, this machine has had some issues. We've had to replace the gearbox, spindle over the years, but when machines are you know older than some people who are coming into this trade, you know, you kind of accept that. It's still cheaper to buy a new spindle than to replace a whole machine these days. But uh, again, nice workhorse machine, does what we need it to do. Behind me here we have uh, one of our three manual mills here. And it's interesting, when this shop used to do manual work, I remember coming in here as a kid and there were five to 10, I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but we had a lot of manual mills in a row and there was a skilled machinist at every single machine. And it's crazy to think that their output was lower than it is today with fewer guys and less machines. CNC has really revolutionized the way uh, this business works. We got our first CNC machine in, I believe we bought that VF4 new in 1995 or 1996. We were one of the first early adopters uh, around here that got into it back when it was still, uh, you know, the old style master cam and programming. I don't think we ever programmed exclusively in G-code. I think we always had programming software. But uh, it was very, very interesting how much that changed our business. And honestly, if at that point we hadn't adopted that technology and pivoted, there is no way we would still be in business today. Um, we were lucky that at the time, since we were an early adopter, we got a couple of really good jobs that lasted for you know over a decade that really funded the expansion of the rest of this company. Um, you know, my old man says that when he first started this company, there were multiple years where he had a four digit T4, and T4 is a tax slip or an income tax slip. And he remembers uh, his accountant saying, Peter, what are you doing? You'd be better going to get a coffee shop job with the amount of money you're making. And uh, it's interesting, he started with five partners and by the time that happened, he was the last partner there. And 
you know, and since then he's been very successful with this company and I hope to keep it going. But uh, it's interesting what happens as the time changes and what happens if you persevere. Over here we have a Haas VF2. This is our newest mill. I believe it is a 2012, 2015, something like that. It's a nice little machine, actually has proper memory space on it as opposed to the ones that are uh, functioning on virtual floppy disks. The last VF3 was still on a floppy disk up until I believe two years ago because we never really ran anything else in it and the programs were small enough, but this one can actually run off the stick. Um, I know that sounds funny to some of you guys, but that's the first machine we've had besides the VF5 that can actually run off the stick. Uh, none of my machines have probes on them. You know, I know some of you guys are saying, well, why not spend the extra five grand and get them? Honestly, I've never run a probe. Uh, I don't think any of my, I think one of my guys maybe has run a probe. At the end of the day, we don't do anything super, super critical tolerance. We're not mold makers. We're not, you know, we can hold within one thou once we get it dialed in, half a thou, a couple tenths, depending on what we're doing. And for the kind of work we do, that's fine. So, you know, uh, at some point, if I got a new machine, I would probably splurge for a probing system, but it was never worth putting it on any of these because we don't do any of that kind of work. Uh, it has a 10,000 RPM spindle, which is really handy because it runs a billion of these parts every year on a fourth axis. I don't know if you can see it in there, but it does have a fourth axis system in it. Um, we run production on these, you know, generally year round. Again, this is a part that, you know, multiple tens of thousands per year. Uh, it's a really nice job. We definitely get some volume out of it. And finally, this is our only CNC lathe. It's a Haas ST20. Um, Great lathe, just straight turning lathe. Um, it's a 2016, 2017. Uh, yeah, for the longest time, we did not have a CNC lathe here. We basically farmed out lathe work or we just didn't do it. We have a manual lathe, which I didn't show you. And we used to have a big boat anchor, giant manual lathe. But generally, if we couldn't do it on a fourth axis or we couldn't do it on a manual lathe, we farmed it out. Um, this has really obviously been a godsend because we can actually get all our <laughs> work done that we need to do and has expanded our capabilities. I don't know how we functioned before we had one, but again, it's like a lot of machines. You don't know how you did it and how you survived before you had it until you, you know, get it. But uh, no, it's been very, very good. It's a great lathe. And with all Haas machines, I know some of you guys don't like Haas machines. I like Haas machines because for the price point, they do excellent work. And if I need parts, I don't need to order them from Korea, Japan, or Germany. I can get them from California or Toronto, uh, which is close to me. So that's very handy, especially if you have a machine down in a rush job, you can get a tech and parts out here, you know, within a couple days. So it's good. This is our last really kind of unique machine here. I'm not going to bother showing you guys band saws or, uh, you know, we have a pneumatic chop saw and stuff, but none of that stuff's really interesting. But this is, this is our old giant drill press, radial arm. Um, it is a 1963. It was used for obviously decades. I think we've had this pretty much since we've opened, uh, you know, mainly to do die shoes, die pens. Uh, before we had CNC, this is if you needed to do a big plate, you scribed it out and you, you know, center punch it and you did it with this because it has no DRO. It, has, it does have auto feed with all this kind of stuff, but it's, uh, it's still a great machine, still runs perfect. I don't think anybody has ever done maintenance on it ever besides adding a bit of oil to it, maybe greasing up the, uh, the arm, but you know, it's one of those machines that doesn't really take up a lot of space compared to our units. And I don't even know how much or where you could get one today, but uh, it's great to have. When you need it, it's really, really handy. We used to have a giant um, auto feed mill, manual mill with auto feed that we used to face off die blocks and then they would come over here, the big die blocks, and they would drill them out on this or on one of the mills. But uh, very, very interesting old machine. I like it. And finally guys, this is our last unit. So the last unit we were just in, that was the second unit. This is our third unit. This one is the one that has our chop saws, our pneumatic chop saws, uh, another mill back there in the corner. And this area is mainly storage. Um, you know, we stock a lot of aluminum extrusions for our customers. Our business was, and still kind of is, uh, predominantly high finish, high visibility, aluminum, anodized aluminum parts, you know, for office furniture, for, um, you know, high display components. So we do do a lot of custom extrusions out of uh, 6063, 7075. Uh, 6063 is great for anodizing, so that's why we do a lot of that. But we own a lot of custom extrusion dies that will get, you know, a thousand pounds of material pushed, stock it on the shelf, and sell it to the customers as they need it. Um, 
We don't do a whole lot with this unit. You know, sometimes this place will be stacked up with parts, but it's always good to have a little bit of overflow room because there have been times when even this has been completely full of parts. So anyways, guys, thank you very much for coming with me uh, to check out my shop. I hope you guys liked it. If you guys ever need anything done, my shop is Lakewood Machine and Tool. You can always find me on my channel at Let's Machine at YouTube.com. And as always, make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see more videos. Stay tuned, guys. There's going to be a lot more shop talk video or uh, shop talk videos coming, and there's going to be a brand new shop tour tour series coming, which just started today. So make sure you guys are uh, staying tuned for that. Thank you very much, guys. You take care. Have a great day.